it that uh, apart from it being examinable as a compulsory question, it also captures all that we have done in a nice way that helps us. I guess met the city campus students also online. I think that helps the majority of the class, especially for revision purposes. And then just in case someone missed the session for a very important reason, I got one or two emails. One had to do a barrier of, okay, a close relative and so wouldn't be present. But that aside, it helps you to, to get the substance of the matter, the emphasis, especially because it will constitute a compulsory question with 30 marks of your final exam. Like I mentioned last week, now I can firm it, firm it up a bit more. So if you didn't get it right or you misunderstood the focus of the discussion, for this very final session of our interactions together, then you would already be out of A, out of a B plus and out of a B just because of one compulsory question. That's the implication. So we don't want too many excuses. We want to make sure students can always reference what was discussed, but more importantly, they will understand it. And if they need to, get back to it, they are able to get back to it. That's the heartbeat of the discussion, apart from the fact that uh, it's, it also fits a very difficult schedule this week. All right, so what are we discussing? The introductory session we had that I threw some light on for the Jechi paper on democracy, the case he makes. You know that we have done a very good summation of the course so far. In fact, when we discussed our interim assessment feedback, I used the opportunity to fill in and mop up. And I like to teach that way all the time. As we are progressing, we, we look back and then connect what we are doing to the current so that you are able to see the narrative from beginning to where we, wherever we were. And so we saw the Rousseau, the Hobbes, the Locke, social contract theories. We, we moved on to the legitimacy of the state. Uh, we saw Quito, Martin Luther King, and even um, Robert Paul Wolf. And then we moved on a bit more to look at the socioeconomic discussions of the uh, uh, communists and the libertarian peripherals, the streams. And we focused on Rawls's mediation of those two extremes, if you like and his contribution to distributive justice, the two principles that he advocates for and how he grounds those, then a critique of them. Now, now we threw it at you for you to make your own contribution. Here we are, last week, we looked at democracy as a system of government. That is a, a seeker, if you like, of what we saw with Rousseau and then which trailed into uh, wolf. Okay, so a rule by the self, a collective self. Now, how would we want to conceptualize democracy? Robert Dahl's paper does a simple, straightforward rendition of it. If you said you don't know what animal is called democracy at all, then that paper straightforwardly mentions the key things you should see with a system of governance that you would call a democracy. And how he stresses that that may be an ideal but it's still worth practicing. Even if we haven't attained the perfect form of it, we can still be working towards it. And so there are certain key tenets in the system of governance that must be present if you want to call it a democracy. There are certain key elements of that system of rule, whether in a department or in your home or in the church or at, at the political level, police level. You have to have certain key elements in that way of ruling or organizing that society for it to count as a democracy. Robert Dow's paper does that for you. Okay. And I will not repeat what he has said explicitly there that you should engage. However, the Jechi focus of those three texts there is the, the Jechi paper is what we delved into and we look closely at 
like we did with all the streams of emphasis that we had per, per team. The cheap paper, what the, the cheap paper was what we gave so much attention to last week. And then I encouraged you to have a look at it because it ties our discussions together. Okay, what does it do? It is conceptual and it was, it was especially conceptualized, I should say. The, the concepts are being extrapolated from an African context. That's one. So that we don't do philosophy outside of a focus, or we, we just don't abstract nice theories that don't work for a, a particular context. So the particularity will extract from a universality, and then the universal will, will tailor itself down into a particularity. So there has to be that conversation between the universalized theories that we are looking at and how they can be contextualized. That's one very positive reason why the JT paper is of interest to us. Then two, not only is it speaking from an African context geographically so that the discussions are relevant to our particular context, not that they look so nice and you heard that Martin Luther said this and Rousseau said that they were all philosophizing on their context at the time. So the ideas may transcend cultures and contexts, but the application must have a certain contextual frame. That is what the JT paper does too. The, the issue being discussed is not just African, not we are studying African, no, they are still relevant. This is the point I made with your colleagues earlier. The concerns that enunciated that discussion are still pertinent today. Then Africa is still experiencing coups unrest, civil unrest, seeming injustice, and ethnic and, you know, traditional difficulties. Now, I, I reference the current uh, news in town. A politician haven't, as it were, spoken against a traditional authority, and the person is in deep, deep waters now, you see, because the people's allegiances to their traditional leadership or their traditional authorities is still very strong, even in this day and age. So you cannot rubbish it. The way they can overlook political, eh, quote and unquote, this are westernized kind of system. I, see, I speak that way advisedly. Okay? The current post-colonial government system we are running. The, the way the generality of the population sees it, it's not as they would want to see their ethnic or uh, more, uh, how do I put it without sounding? I don't want to say tribal, but they are ethnic groupings. They have a certain sense of attachment to that, so much so that the authority of the traditional leader hasn't been uh, overlooked, even if it's not as strong as it was in the past. It's still very potent. And that has implications on how we are, ru we are ruling ourselves as a nation in Ghana, in Africa as a whole. So that's the second reason for the emphasis on the JT paper on the JT chapter, okay? And then third, the need to improve our democratic system generally, whether it is doing well already or not, it won't matter. If we looked at what works, the, the suggestions he makes, the, 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 the options he points to, then we get an improved system. So we are looking at that and we will be expected to answer questions that show that we have engaged the text. And we can reconcile what he's saying to Rousseau and to Wolf and to Rawls and to the earlier papers we've done so that we have a good social and political philosophical background. So that is by way of, if you like, introduction again to what we did. And so last week we saw some things, but now I want you to take over the discussion. Let us know what you saw in the dirty paper. Now that we, you had the introduction with myself, I recorded the session and put down for you. There are no excuses. If you didn't get something I said earlier, you played it again and again and again. That's the assumption. If you still didn't get something you want to ask now, but the focus of our discussion today, the first 30 minutes or so, is to get what you saw in the cheese paper. As he reacted to these three on your screen now, I think I'm sharing, oh, let's see. Yes, as he reacted to these three assumed uh, problems that account for the failure in democracies in Africa now. Some have thought that the system is alien to us, so we don't like it. The system of governance. 
that was bequeathed to us by colonialism. That's, the system is alien, so we don't like it, period. Not that because it's alien, we can't operate it. That's another side of the alien argument, okay? That it is not our own, so we don't know how to use it. I, I, I think I spoke more and elaborated more. You can look at the, the City Campus uh, recording. I've, I've uploaded it on the channel. I don't think it is showing yet. Um, I mean, this lecture, when I finish, I'll put that link and share that also. The point I'm making is the alien system. People think that it is because of the, the fact that the system of governance we are running now is not our own. It's not born of our experiences. It's not, does not emerge from the way we live. We think of ourselves. You see, we, we don't think of a minority, majority kind of governance system. That is not African. We don't see someone like they, they, they are on their own and we are here. We are communal, we, we are relational, we look out for each other. Supposedly, that's the cultural values that we hold. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm talking about the African situation, you see. We are not individualistic. So even if it doesn't concern you, you want to cooperate, you want to contribute to it. We like, we, we, we. You see, we've heard all of those from the community and individualism debate. And so it looks like a system that will, will be so entrained that I am a minority group and you are a majority group. If, if any system at all wants us to live that, we will struggle with it. Because then <laughs> we won't be able to have a consensual approach to any issue, but we are typically interested in the welfare of others. How, how are you? How is your mother? Hey, yesterday, did your mother return early? Hey, did she give birth to the twins? Oh, we thank God. When are you doing the outdooring? I mean, <laughs> This is typically African. And I'm not the one quoting it. You can, you can look at I, I told your friends I'll share a paper. I hope I remember to do that. A paper I, I did myself. So you can see some of the references I made. And you will see they say you, the African is so sometimes uh, concerned about it. When, when I see you, I don't see you as an individual. I see you as your father and your mother and everything around you to the point of being intrusive sometimes. Like you're intruding my life, please. That's it, you should tell someone that I give it to twins. Oh, so when are you graduating? Hey, we thank God, oh, this is your school. I heard that they said some, there's some strike there. So what, I mean, <laughs> you know, oh, the person doesn't have a limit. He just keeps going and going and going. We are concerned about the welfare of others. As part of our will, because I am, because we are, and since we are, therefore I am, we know that story that is more typically African. How can you run a political system, therefore, which instigates a party kind of posturing? Plant partyism. Partyism, not a one-off, like we have to make a decision now, so immediately this group sits to think about it and that group. No, entrenched. So the sitting position, even in parliament, says one half here, the other half there. It's, a, it's typically an African. And so these are some of the things that perhaps the people will not be able to manage. It will go so bad because it's not their way of doing things. So it goes contrary to how they would normally live as Africans, culturally, gener generally, okay? This is one of the things. So it's alien or that is alien here, meaning that not, not just that we, we, we don't live that way, so we don't know how to manage it. But that even if we work at managing it, we won't, because we don't like the fact that you impose it on us. I don't know if you get the difference. I try to elaborate a bit more in the earlier class, saying that sometimes the thing is alien, but you could accept it, incorporate it into the way you do things, and work at it to make it better. But at other times, not just because it is alien, but you are angry at it. You don't like it. So it is for someone, but I have taken it and I've cut it to, to shape and size so I can wear it. It's still alien, but I have been able to manage it and, 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 and trimmed it to fit my own size. So it's not my dress, but I've been able to do alterations on it to fit me. Okay, that could have worked. 
But sometimes, because it is alien, something of it that because it's alien, you are not even making an attempt at trying to adjust. You don't like it at all. So you don't you won't even adjust it to, to fit you. Two extremes that would therefore account for the failure of the democracies that we are running in Africa. Someone will say, oh, but who says that democracies have failed? Hello, please. If you don't, uh, can I say, oh, we are, we are, if you don't sell your sickness, you won't get help. These schools and whatever that are going on, who says everything is all right with that? So it might not be the worst of scenarios for every African country, but we know that our democracies are, are not too successful for different reasons and at different degrees. That could, uh, could be one of the reasons accounting for that, the twofold ways of thinking of the alien systems as the cause. Then some also think it's a dispositional issue, and I, and I elaborated on the first discussion we had last week, and also with your colleagues on that I'll share. You will see that it is not really, if you wanted to critique it, it couldn't necessarily be a problem of people having a morally decayed you know, uh, uh, position or outlook to life. Not that people are just corrupt. African leaders, they, they are just corrupt. Before the person sat on this on the seat of government, it, perhaps he or she was even a religious leader or whatever you count there, you respected the person until they sit there. When they sit there, we tend to think of them as corrupt. Why? Is it a system that is making them like that? Or it is reconciling the system with the way we live, our experiences. I mean, people give a good to say thank you to the chief or to the judge or to the lecturer. And they don't think they've done anything wrong. They think they got the grade on merit. The lecturer didn't do anything, didn't skew marks for them. They just want to show appreciation. That is a cultural thing. There we go. I'm showing you, I'm trying to show you how it is that people may misinterpret their position in government. Or those who are observing them may also misinterpret that. And it is all a misfit. Misfit of what? The system and how the people live. So I'm just giving instances which may be interpreted as corruption. When the person seated there doesn't even see that, or the people doing that don't see it as corrupt. That's why we have to help evolve systems that can be reconciled with what a cultural way of life or our actual experiences. Otherwise, there will be labels and tags of negativity. When the people practice, they don't see it to be negative. In fact, they think that that is a good sign. The guy takes care of his family, folks. Meanwhile, the guy is taking care of the family, folks, means the people coming in do not merit that position. You see, the culture thinks of it that way. That if you... Listen to that. If someone, I'm not a, an assent you. I've learned it too. So don't be too... Don't give me too much credit. If someone is looking for something good to take to Asante, Kotoko is like a label for Asante. It's just a typical example. Of it. You don't have to frustrate that hand. So that means if you are not careful, you don't interpret that well. As soon as one Asante person sits on the throne, when he's going, we leave it as an inheritance for the next Asante person. Hello? It's a cultural thing. The thinking of the people. You see, so you have to Slow down when you are in a hurry to say the person lacks virtue. Who is determining that? When we are applauding our one person who entered into power eh, and so had access to the resource, we are, we are so proud of him because just him in power has changed our whole eh, ethnic group, <laughs> extended family. And we think that he's such a great asset. You are sitting there saying he's a person that likes virtue. Oh, you need papa. Hey, this brother, this man, he's a person. That is the acc accolade he will receive for doing what? For jumping the queue and giving you your application acceptance, stamping your application. When you know the others were first class. Now, this one sounds negative until you are that side. Suppose you came and I were your auntie. And I was on the admission team, the chairperson of the admission board. And you didn't get admission. What will you go and tell my sister who is your mother? Hey, auntie is wicked. 
Antipa, she has taken all the intestines out of her tummy and put you up there. You are sitting at a place like this. You couldn't have a place for your wapasi, your niece. You couldn't place her at DBL or something. You see how we think? It's a cultural thing. Look at how he buried his mother. I'm talking about moderation now. When people say these are the reasons why governance is not what? Effective. The democracies have been watered down. They are not successful because you see, they see how people are uh, pro profit. That word is what prof pro Professor Tamil's word. May so rest in peace. Profligate expenses. Because the system says, the cultural experience of the people says, you cannot bury your mother in a certain way. If she dies, you have to let her lie down for some time. Keep her in the fridge for a while. Don't bury your mother like a chicken. That's what you'll be told. And then make, make the funeral elaborate and extend it. So the one week, then the 40 days, then the whatever, 60 days and three years. And so the corpse is in the fridge. For years, people, if you are not careful, you will think that it is the authority, that government official that is doing that. The day they will go for the way keeping, that if it's a government appointee, when I say government, don't think that now, this CE and, you know, C, chief executive officer of the Ghana Broadcasting or the DVLA or uh, passport office, you know, those places, that are appointed by government. I say that day they do the barrier for the mother. The cultural thinking, how the people think and behave and live, the people, you and I included. That Friday, there will be nobody signing checks at the office day. They've all gone for food now. Because you cannot sit in office working when your boss's mother is being buried that Friday. I'm telling you, if you are waiting for your document to be signed so that you go and procure whatever, Na lie. That Friday, no work. Saturday, nothing. Monday, they'll go for Nasir and they'll go and share the, the That is for the one week. Then they'll do the 40th day. Then the burial proper, all of them have to go and give donations. Big, big, big. So if an MP visits that place, what should he do? Your name is ceremony. I want MP to come. If he doesn't carry that, he's not showing uh, cooperation. He's not thinking about his solidarity. You are, a, we are your back. You are our son. We put you there. If you have so the cultural system, when would a person, if the person is doing all this and he thinks he's being a virtuous person, you the one that says, you say he likes virtue, moral virtue. But the people say, well, you need Papa. He's already a human being, but he's really a person. And when you ask why, ah, you will never go to this man's house and come without anything. When you go where you come, he'll give you two bags of rice or something. Ah, he takes care of people. Did you ask where he got that money from? You are branding him or you need papa because he is benevolent. It is your e-levy money. Eh? I'm just giving an example to make the point. That has come, that should do the road for us. That he's using to be benevolent. So you call him or you need papa. The system. So the man is trying to fit into perhaps, perhaps, a system that defines what is what acceptable culturally and what is not acceptable culturally. But have we subjected that to scrutiny? So you may say the person is is uh, what lacks what moderation is not moderate. Should he go and marry the mother in two weeks' time in one small family compound there when he is a government appointee, a government official? With the money is accessible to him. This is the thinking. See, if he does that, you and I will say, Ah, ah, Kwepa, is that how he buried his mother? Okay, me, I'm not included, mom. But there are certain people who do that. You go for the someone's, uh, you know, funeral or wedding or something, not wedding, traditional marriage, and especially the funeral one, then some about the donation time. If you are the this CEO of the area, he cannot come and put 50 cities. And so, me too, I have come, and this is the living church, yes, the churches and the mosque, when they invite you, where God is there, and God knows that you don't have, all you have is your salary, go to a sister's house, they have used 2,000 to do your rent, and you bought fuel for the month, and now it's left with 300 cities that you are going to manage. So you go and say, okay, I'm giving you 100. 
God knows. They say God knows, but this one is not God. We are here. You can't come and give us 100 cities. You are MP. People, so the man must do something to show, to meet the expectations or of the way of life, the experiences of the people. Before long, he's now being accused of not being virtuous. So I'm trying to show you that that she's making a strong point in the text that I'm going to elicit from you yourselves. I'm just putting flesh to it. Before you say, you start saying it is the political leader that lacks moderation, that is impatient, that is incorruptible. Look at yourself and all of us as a collective and our way of doing things. Perhaps if we situated our governance system in a way that can cohere with the way we believe things should be done, then what we call corrupt may have a different color. Because I may be bringing the goat to the judge because that is how we do the adasi. We don't go before the kings. This is figurative now, eh? Without anything. Even the church, when we are going to do offering, we say that. Don't go before the king empty-handed. It hurts the protocols. So you are going to tell the king that some people are trying to take a land that is yours for me. You are now going to solicit his attention or his help to sit on the matter. But you don't go there empty-handed. If you go and you went with your schnapps or your goat, in our kind, the way we think, that would be like corruption. But that is how things are done. <laughs> you see the point? So before we start adopting another way of doing things, when we import wholesale a system of governance that doesn't appreciate these ways, then we will call the judge corrupt. The lecturer that has finished, for example, let's use those ones, has finished uploading results, has objectively assessed students as much as possible. And then the student says, oh, I'm going to my, I finished school now. So I'm coming to say thank you for all the assistance you offered. The person is finished school. So you might think, oh, okay, then that one day, it doesn't have any direct influence on it. Yes, maybe not, but maybe it's a preparatory ground for his, his sister who is coming to level 300 or level 200, where, where you will be. <laughs> what about that? So that can corrupt the person, even if unintended. What am I saying there? So we have to understand the people's experiences. Then it will make sense to know how to interpret the governance and see what will work. And so just to make that final point, you will see then that some system that we call a world democracy that we appreciate are running a monarchy in addition to parliamentarian or whatever. And it works fine. I'm referring to British, the Britain, uh, the British monarchy. America doesn't run a monarchy. There's no king there, but it's also a democracy. Why are they not doing the same thing? I said that in class every time. Don't we call both a democracy? We do. The people are wise. They are wise. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't imply anything. You have to watch your, your leg size, your leg, your foot size, and find the shoe that will fit your leg or your foot. And wear that. Also cognizant of where you are walking. Someone is walking on a smooth, leveled path and is going. And so she, she can afford a high heel. You are walking on gravels which is also fine in its own right. But you want to go and wear high heels. Eh? Where will your heels be? How, how? <laughs> you have to understand. We have to think and adapt and fine tune and question systems. I have asked you two questions. So I'm going to engage you. And already the starting point, one group is called majority. Another one is called minority entrenched, not that we are making a certain decision. So those who, a majority of us agree for this one, then the next minister, no, this one, it is a position. In fact, there's a majority, uh, Sasa. <laughs> there's a, my, I said majority, there's a majority leader. Hey, someone leading the majority group. And there's another one leading the minority group. That is the starting point. You say oh, that will allow for competitiveness. Do we have to have an entrenched group having that label? How will I listen to you when you are ma minority now and you also want to be majority and call the shots? All we need to do is count one, two, three. The number of people, if you have 51 and you have 49, I have one. I mean, this is governance, people. 
so what? So should we throw the parliamentarian system? No, we have to tweak it. You know, introduce certain things. This is the thrust of the Jechi argument. There are certain things in our traditional African governance system. Some are values, some are practices, some are theories that undergird how we are ruling ourselves. We have to pick them, go back into the past and get those particular features, elements, because they are relevant for today. They will make a better democracy than what we are having now with all these troubles. He didn't say go back for everything in the past. The man didn't say that. Don't tell him anyone he said that and go and carry everything and bring. No, some elements of the past are not pleasant. And I gave you one the last time. I think I can mention some few others if you are reading him. The matrilineal system, where it doesn't encourage creativity and responsibility. You go and open your something for people to come and impregnate you and you have a child. Then when you finish, you want your brother's property to be for your children. What about your own husband? What happens to your brother's children and the wife he had? So Jechi, for example, was very vocal about it, not only in writing, but in his presentations. And in, I mean, he was very strong about it. I can even picture him as, as his student and how he could provocatively make those points. And sometimes we jokingly say, wow, and we all laugh about it. He's, very, very strong on those positions. So you cannot tag him with the Sankofaism label, returning for the past. No, that can work for some people. He is a critical Sankofaist, meaning that he says, if I'm going into the past to look for certain elements, practices, features, I want to check it against the standard of what human well being. Will it work for the well being of human beings? Will it auger for the human welfare? So that past product or present product element, eh, test it against human well-being. This is his posture throughout. So don't get it twisted. He's not asking that we go and do whatever was being done in the past because some of the things of the past were Ill, Ill, uh, in, uh, what, inelegant. Now, if you got that, then what then I'm going to ask you, are the features that Jechi thinks we can go for from the past. And I'm ready to hear you. Some, anybody, the uh, democratic features that he thinks the past had. You would have to do it quickly so that you don't have too lengthy a recording to engage if you have to play back to fill in your gaps. I'm waiting, please. Anyone? This is the last lecture. Don't put pressure on yourselves. Okay. Oh, nobody read. You don't know anything. I will ask you to go and read it and answer your compulsory question. My people. You may want to raise your hand though, so that I can call you. Okay, so you will read and find the element. They are all explicitly written. I just wanted one or two comments from you and then I would have taken it from there, but it looks like you have, I hope it is not the case that people haven't read at all. It's straightforward. I, I, I am hoping that you will look at it and, and see the case he makes for features of what democratic practice. I'm still waiting. Oh, Patricia, go ahead. No, please. Are you referring to um? Uh, I've missed the name. Jechi. Is it Jechi? Oh, okay. The one I read was on Dao. Hey, were you in class last week? Yes, please. Patricia, I don't like yes, the student line. I don't like the lying thing, right? You don't know. I feel insulted when students do that. Were you in class last week? Please, I was. Ah, how were you in class? The recording is there. 
when we were ending, I talked and talked. Did you see the projected slide last week, my lady? Yes. Ah, so when we were closing, who did we say we are going to read? Jeshu. But you said you read Da. Okay, so you, you have the opportunity to read Jeshu now. You have to read him, otherwise you will miss 30 marks. Because I'll mark that essay strictly. It's a compulsory question. We want to know how much impact we can make in our democracy. We shouldn't be just learning social and political philosophy and getting, you know, A's and looking good and having it on our transcript. And yet our democracy is the way it is. You see that. So we, we want to churn out students that by the grace of God, God will place them at good places and they will think productively too impact our society. This paper, this chapter, and what it speaks for and stands for helps us in that regard, but we were still subjected to criticism like philosophers. So if you haven't engaged the content, then I'm not too happy with it, okay? You have to do it. You still have some time before you write the exam. Kumado, go ahead. Augustine. Yeah, Doc, good evening. Good evening. Yes, please. So um, as I was reading, I came across that he said that the concept of autonomous towns and villages can still be applied today. What is that? What is that autonomous style? Autonomous no. towns and villages. Yes, please. Just, so, tell, me, um, he, just tell me, uh -huh. just tell me in simple terms. So if you were, uh, you were trying to tell someone what Jeti says we should go back for in the past. What would you say? Jeti is saying this thing happened in a traditional setting and it is still relevant today. We will need it for the life okay, of so, the our democracy. So go back for it. What? Just, let's just outline those. One of them is what? Yeah, so he said that towns, towns should be given the privilege to make their own decisions outside Very the influence so of other towns. Very good. So we should decentralize. Thank you, Augustine. Think around and bring more because this is key. It's so straight. People don't like reading. <laughs> people, people don't like reading. But you can't do philosophy without reading. I have read it two times. I told your colleagues this this chapter. I've read it twice since last week. The whole thing. And I don't teach you in this course. And I'm not going to write an exam. But I wanted to oh. help you. Uh -huh. So it is it is a push train. After for even this done, I I went through some of the pages again, highlighting things, so that if if we are discussing, I'll point them out to you. So decentralization is one of the strong arguments that she makes. She says that the traditional African political system is a decentralized one. What does that mean? Things are not all gathered at the center. Look at University of Ghana. We are now running a collegiate system. In the past, it was a centralized system. Even if you want to know whether your grade has come on or you have to go to the central administration. Can you imagine? Look at the numbers. And the colleges have so much authority to do so much. Then it, it, is, it trails down to the uh, school level. The school, that's the dean who heads the school, has some level of autonomy in deciding certain things. Then it comes to the department, the head of department, have some level of autonomy, you see, for certain things. So if it is something within the Department of Philosophy and Classics, I mean, we are determining exam officer or who should coordinate this course or something. It doesn't have to come from central administration. When will they finish writing the letters and copying all these offices and everybody making an input? It will just delay everything. And people will not feel a sense of belonging, you see, and contributing to the room. And so that also leads us to one of the things that Jechi emphasizes, participatory democracy. You should be making those notes. You want to see them on the screen so that you snapshot and put down. It's so lazy an approach to learning. <laughs> I don't have a problem doing that, but the slides are there. But it will be a, a show, Shebone. I taught you the wrong thing. You can't even write a thesis if I do that consistently. This second semester level, sorry, Andy, you see that you won't be able to do a long essay because you don't know how to construct it. But I know that some of you do. You just need to be poked here and there to bring out what you do. Okay. So participatory democracies is another one. Take note of the point. Let me hear understand so that I don't say everything. Just say, go ahead. 
Okay, Doc, please, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, she also um, said we can also pick something from the mode of election of chiefs. Very good. And what he stated was that, um, you see, whenever um, the chiefs are being elected from the royal family, the Ochiame comes to give an in, in, injunction to the um, the chief elect. And this injunction is made to, what, to make the chief know that he is in office for the people. And in the injunction, the Ochiame states what the people expect of him. So this is done to, what, to keep in mind of the chief that he is not there to operate on his own will, but to operate on the will of the people. Very important, very good, Joseph. So you should be writing that down, friends, if you don't know it. Joseph said it. That he says the traditional setting stress on the will of the people. The will of the people. It is the people, not what you think is good for the people. And I don't want to use any examples because uh, every time there is a president or a presidency, a government. So sometimes when you are interrogating matters like that, it hates the current. Uh, uh, administration, but it is something that is true of our 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 government since time immemorial. People are always thinking they can make decisions that are good for you, so that and do and enjoy it. That's Leviathan. That's that's Hobbesian. You have to hear the people. We, the people of Ghana, you see, they are well. Yepe, you serve us, so we tell you that we don't like this thing you are introducing. You say, no, that thing will help you. You don't know what you need. We, we know. Hey, we can't do that traditionally, says Jechi. Because even the selection, so you want to write that too. See how we are making the point? Even the selection of the lead is on the, upon the, what, the consent of the people. And then when you come and you are coming to swear those oaths, it is the, the linguist, the liaison officer, so to speak, eh? who uh, reiterates those points and you accept it publicly and you hear the people are there listening to you. It's not you that come and think about something to say, no, we have our dictates. We, when we call you, you shouldn't tell us that you are, you are tired. <laughs> we expect that when there is a, a fire outbreak at a place and because of that, we have lost our things at the market. You don't come two weeks later and come and do, oh, sorry, I'm, no. We want you to be there. When we call you morning, afternoon, evening, or dawn, you should respond to us, we, we the people. According to Jesse, this is what was happening in the traditional setting. And the chief who was the highest political authority then has to salute to that. So see, we have mentioned participatory democracy. Why? The people saw the government as theirs. Rousseau. They saw themselves as part of the rule, Rousseau. So they are citizens. That is why when the, the chief calls that, let's go and do uh, 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 clear your frontage, operation clear your frontage, which now people have to struggle to get people to. The woman was selling her watch. I saw it in the news. <laughs> By the gutter. Hey, you didn't hear what the government appointee said. Is a mini. Well, no, no, no. Open our channel by That means what? Didn't you hear what they said? We should close our shops and wait till 10. He said, What? Let me think. And then she addressed her customer. How much will you buy? Would she say that if she was addressing the traditional, uh, because she spoke Ghana, let me use that, the traditional lead of the Ghana people who said, This morning no one is selling. We are going to revere our. Uh, uh, ancestors and what have you, uh, solemn times, so no car honking and no distance selling till 12 o'clock. Nobody should. I mean, she won't even come to work. And it's not because she's a gun. It's because she recognizes the authority of the traditional head. This is the thing that people fail to see. If that thing is not imposed. You don't, yeah. impose you don't impose it. The people psychologically think of themselves that way, are emotionally tied to their ethnic groupings. And someone will say, oh, don't, because that is where they come from. Says who? Your mother is Fante. Your father is Ga. Your, your father's father is half Hausa and fa half uh, Enzima. But you say you are Fante. What about the other Blacks that are running through? When we did cultural identity in the multicultural state, I think in level 200, we saw that. 
It is just something you believe and you accept it that you are fanti. Is it your father God? Is it your great grandfather eh, 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 from the north? Eh, Dagomba. Why do you say you are God or Asante? It's just a choice you make. But the people feel that sense of belonging. Jechi stresses that when you go through the pages, you see. He stresses that if the people see that they are part of it, they see themselves psychologically, have to work it, but allow it to grow gradually. Don't force it. The colonial ruler used a whip to whip people into position and cut the Everland into two and said, you people are Togo and you people are Ghana. Really? You think it is by veto? It won't work. That's why people bath in Ghana at the border there between Ghana and Togo. Eh? The person who bath in Ghana, he go and come and say at Togo and come and eat his sabbats at Sapa at Ghana and then go fishing at Togo. And the next morning, he's, I mean, his wife is here and the firstborn is here. His uh, garden egg farm is here and the Okro one is over there. I'm trying to show you that he doesn't think he is either Ghanaian or Togolese. He is ever. <laughs> if you can't bear it, go and, go and kill yourself. He doesn't care. He's ever. Take note. So if you are Ghanaian sovereignty lead, whoever is governing Ghana, and you want to manage that well, you have to be cautious. Not to come and we are voting. So these people are not Ghanaian. It is very delicate because you cannot buy allegiance with what? Veto. And you cannot make people, these own people, you know, buy by the pen. It won't work. You can't force a woman to be your wife. Uh, in, 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 physically, she may be sitting in your room. In her heart, her heart is with her brother, Johnny Bravo, already. I want you to get that. So if you want to let people find themselves connected to the international community that we have now. Why international? Because there are several nations within the big political setting called Ghana. If you want to transfer such allegiances to the bigger set, then it has to be worked gradually. Let the people feel a sense of belonging. What happened in recent times in Ghana? That some people said, we, we are not Ghanaian. We are Western Togolan. We want our sovereignty back. Do you understand what that means? It, it shouldn't continue when people, when people feel or are made consciously, this is the argument of Jechi, to belong to the whole. So if it's a group leader, so let's come to our academic, you are a group leader. You want to make sure that everyone is brought in, their needs, their interests, their point of view to the matter is included. There comes consensual democracy, uh, democratic decision-making, consensual. Not that these people are not a dominant group, so they are ignored, or even if they are they are listened to only so far as it fits into the narrative for the dominant group. You will get them cut off. They won't see themselves as part of the body politic. And if that happens, they might be nominally members of the state, but emotionally they have, uh, you know, they owe allegiance and attachment and loyalty to their subgroup, not to you. So they won't bring what they know that to make the nation survive. I'm telling you, they will just be waiting for you to finish your term so that they can meet. And I'm, I'm, I'm hitting on the ethnicity bit because for Africa, that is central. Look at all the coups that have happened and see whether there aren't ethnic intonations. Some pronounced, some are not pronounced, but it's there. Okay. And so you want to work that up. So you see, I've mentioned consensual decision making. There isn't entrenched position. Please bring your point. Make a note of all the points that your colleagues are helping you see, and then I'm elaborating on. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, my doc. Um, one of the problems that I think is um, causing the failure in African democracies is the principle of oneness. Oneness, and when you look at the principle of oneness, it will allow democracy to function on um, a false assumption. Instead of pursuing wholeness, which is a better approach, unlike the oneness, which just um, overlooks the various concerns by the subgroups, as we are talking about the ethnicity um, problem as well. So when okay. when we're able to pick or have right. this oneness, a wholeness system, it it helps us to have a centralized 
state structure. And what matters here is that whether centralized or decentralized, the state is marked by a conscious, genuine sense of nationhood. So individuals in the state um, see themselves as part of the ruling system or the government, or they feel that their world is considered in the general, like when you are looking at um, the social contracts, let's say by Rousseau. Yeah. You, know, you can find your role being um, recognized in that central idea, that central system that is in um, the head of the state. So I think that is, that is one way we can also help to avoid the failing African democracy. Receiving well homeless instead of families. You have read miles, eh? I can see. Yes, well done. <laughs> well done. So I was just saying that eh, if you listen to what your friend said, you may want to know what, what is this thing about oneness versus wholeness. You see, when we say we are one Ghana, there's an implicit sense. If you are not careful, you will force people to be what they are not. You see? that we don't have to all be homogeneous to have a common focus. We can have a common focus in our diversity. You don't have to tell me to stop speaking Ghan or Fante or Eve, just so that we'll be Ghanaian. That's problematic <laughs> because people are attached to these things. Don't rubbish them. This is Africa. People love their chiefs. Read Sitoli. I'll show you the, the most recent publication that I, I was referring to also. The one your friend is referring to is an earlier one, but there's another one we have done in recent time. You see, Sitoli said the king is the people. If you insult our king, you have insulted us. See our friend, Eja Odike. Look at the pressure he's under now. Eh? He's a politician, a powerful one at that. Powerful because someone who wants to stand for presidency. Is he a joking person? But the man is. At large, we blame because he's contending with what a traditional authority. The people will not joke with their. It doesn't mean that the authorities don't err, but they said even if the the chief is, you don't use your left finger to point at your hometown. There's a way of correcting an elder. Look at God and Moses. You think God didn't see that Moses was bad tempered? <laughs> even his own compatriot Aaron and Miriam said they bail you, Masa. This thing you are doing is wrong. Well, they were speaking to Moses. Someone said, yeah, Moses, and they go and Google it. Google. Google Moses, Miriam, and Aaron. It will come. Don't get yourself worked up, okay, if you are not a Bible person. But I'm saying that the people who he was working with, co-partners in the transition business, they were transitioning from one place to the other, were angry at him that this thing you are doing, God will not be happy. I'm going to take it through that. God said, don't marry from that place. This woman will come for will go and attract God's anger. Miriam. Ga, 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 ga. Do you know what God told them? In fact, when Moses was, oh, but you to be patient, he said, what? Every day, he think it's only you, God speaks. We too, God speaks to us. In other words, we too, we have some authority, spiritual authority. You would expect that if God comes, the people were fighting God's battle for him, really. Aaron and Miriam. God would, you, you would think that God would come and tell Moses, you see, you see what you drive your people like God punished Miriam. Not because what Moses did was right, but because authority. Oh, this is my issue. So those of you who have listened to my commentary with some of the Moody's operandis and then some of the exposés that we saw, I got the opportunity of sitting next to our fine journalist, uh, uh, Anas Harimi Anas, at a, a, se a session uh, earlier when, when the exposés were high and, you know, it was the talk of the time. Okay, I believe he was the one I was sitting with. He came with his apparel. He sat next to me. But I said I believe because I wouldn't be able to tell if he came, but I suspect he was the one because some knew him, but he was covered. And we we deliberated. So these inputs I'm making, as I sat by him and applauded the very important exposition, I still had reason to critique some of the modus of Randy ethically from the point of view of ethics, really. So don't, don't not, not the legality or the, the, perhaps the functionality of it. Because in trying to correct, that's the point I'm making. If you're not careful, you will run down the system that holds the center together. You see, it has to be done. I say, you have to manage it, mediate it, mitigate it. That doesn't mean cover up, no. But if, you, if the center is destroyed, it can't hold. 
So even if our legal system, our judiciary system is that bad, let's take it for granted that it's so bad. It is still the one that keeps us going. The reason why you will be careful not to come and slap me when I'm teaching is because there's a policeman standing somewhere who can arrest you for what you've done. That's how we say, oh, but the police people, they take whatever. But even if they take it, they are the same people that if you found a dead person on the road, God forbid, you go and call them to come and carry. The same people. So in the bid to correct, you don't want to you empty the thing. So you don't throw away the baby with the baby water, the dirty water. This is the concern. That is why if you found that someone is culpable, report them. But this, I didn't listen to all of it, but the way our, our man, I find he's very outspoken, is he himself is on the run, uh, not on the run, he's at large. He says, when they ask me, he says, I can't tell you where I am because I know that uh, it, it is not safe. Not, not safe as in someone is going to kill you. Go to Mensha, they want to talk to you. There. He says they have, they have done some incantation at the place there, saying that I shouldn't enter that place. Ah, but I thought you were politically that this thing is UK. He said, hey, they are asking me to come. If I go and something happens to me, they say, well, nobody will. They say, no, but not physical. I'm not talking physical. The people have authority. So they cut the, the head of a ship and said some things. So if they want me to come to that same place that they said they are saying it, no, this brother should not enter this place. And I go there, can go against me. It's spiritual. He was speaking, I listened to his interview briefly. Why am I saying all these things? Do you think if it sometimes the court orders someone to, to be brought to court, the person says, I won't go until they subpoena the person. <laughs> they don't fear. They don't feel any loyalty. You won't get some people from, you know, a certain region coming to say that, why, why is it that MP called you and didn't come? Have you heard something? But you try it with a traditional leader. Excuse my language, all due respect, no matter how low level you think he or she is, maybe even plays drum, daft, a draft at the junction there. Some traditional leaders too. You don't make the thing some, you know. But as soon as he wears his apparel as the traditional leader, the people think of them differently. And I'm telling you, can we exploit that? Rather than trying to run it down in the name of creating a homogeneity. No. You will create problems for yourself. Use it to let, let the various different groupings, whichever level of groupings you see, especially the ethnic ones that people erroneously believe that is historical, is biological. This one is my brother, Nyebro. You hear that often. Look at the bright upstairs of Ghana. What is it about? What is it about? It's funny sometimes when you think about it. Look at the water uh, region, the Akan, Akan people at water region. Look at some of the, the conflicts are years old. So the point I'm making is you cannot all of a sudden say so there is no gun, fanti, and there is. If you, if you hear you speaking vernacular, you are in trouble. Hey, you, if it, it won't go. That will worsen the matter. The people will feel a detached from the central government, which is already fake. Take note. Why is it fake? It was created by the whip of the colonial master. Look at Zenzima. The people at Zenzima border are, are they Ghanaians or Ivorians? Ah, the person crosses here and goes there through Elibu and goes to his hometown and goes to his farm there. The next morning he asks, well, you said he, he's not Ghanaian, so he's only coming good. And when he goes to Cote d'Ivoire, to Cote d'Ivoire to say, you are Ghanaian. This person says, you, you are Ivorian. The man says, I'm Zenzima. <laughs> so you have to manage it. People, don't diffuse it. Diffusion means you want to uh, run it down. That is what will generate a repulsive posture from the people. They won't mind you. But play into it. So tell, uh, you see, Abudu uh, King or Andani or you know, the Gumba King or Asante him or the Ga King or Ebe Togbe or something. Tell him, please, we want to do the National Identification Authority. Can you reach it out, reach out to you, the people within your ambit that please they should all take the national id card so that we can have a uniform this what you are doing is you are recognizing it's like talking to the class rep or talking to the uh, src president don't say i'm the uh, example i'm just i'm the vice chancellor so where everybody does it won't work i'm telling you okay use the the people or the persons that the people feel 
that own. This one is our own. This one, this be one our own. You see, use it and then let the, the person feel that we are all together, even in our difference. That's that's the wholeness. We are a whole. Doesn't mean we are one. One means when you come, is one color running through, one language. And in the past, that has been the attempt. One party state, one, one system of rule, one language. That, of course, a common language will help. By a common language means we are all trying to use, like the way we use English now. We are trying to find one that will run through, not one that is imposed on people. They won't speak it. I'm telling you, I don't want to give any example. There are people when you, you talk to them in a certain language, they will respond in their own language, even though they can hear you clearly. Because they don't want imposition. But if you let it evolve, emerge, of course, some of the emergence is also still a power play of a kind. But then, then it means the survival of the fittest, which we don't want to happen. But the worst scenario is where you impose it. Now our national language is this. Now this is what we will do. It is not going to attract allegiance psychologically and emotionally. And Jachi is very strong on that, that the people must own the government so that the government will be government of the people, by the people and for the people, not just make uh, elect people into offices, MP or DC or something. So the next four years, you will not see the person. He doesn't represent you. He's saying what he wants to get done. And you are so frustrated. Before you know, they are building bridges. Meanwhile, the, what you need very much is a transformer in that area. So you get light and oh, <laughs> the person doesn't come anywhere. So you are just quietly waiting till the four years come. So you, you will to Mr. Banshee. You see, I put her out of office or him out of like cassava. That's all. So the governance is not really a ruling where we are all participating. Oh, we all decided to go to this IMF. It didn't work for us. Okay, so what do we do now? Can we consider this? Where the people, not minority versus majority, say local thinking, ah, and we are not progressing, we can't see. And the people who taught us that have left that way of managing their system. They've left it a long time ago and have improved. Change some of the things. How? That she says, in the past, when those democracies that we, we applaud now were now teething, they were badding, even women didn't have a place. Look at the Martin Luther King people already. I mean, blacks, <laughs> it's just recent that you could even vote. So if at that time of their democratic uh, growth, when they were growing then, you went to assess them, you would not think they even have a democracy. Look at Greece, which is the antecedent of Western democracy. Some people were born slaves. Some were, were supposed to be serfs, work, and they don't make the decisions. The women cry, they're far away. Think about it. It's the same place that this current Western democratic you know, systems evolved from. Evolved, that's the word. So if we allowed the traditional, the way we do things, the way we have learned to live, responding to our experiences, trying to solve our practical problems of existence that are peculiar to us. If we allow that to evolve, then you see that we'll have a place for free expression. We'll have a drabo. I think I mentioned that last week. A drabo means a marketplace from the word a market. What happens there? Jechi touches on that, those who have read. Negotiation, compromise. Eh? You are battering. So you batter not in, in, in butter trade, not in be beating each other, no. At the marketplace, I am having the good. You have the money. I want your money. You want my good. So when you come and I say the tomatoes is three cities, you say, oh, three cities, yeah, I can't pay. I'll give you two cities. I say, no, two cities is too small. You add 50 to it. Oh, no, I'll add 30, I'll add 20. What are we negotiating? Why? Because we respect the fact that each of us will benefit. I have something that you want. You have something that I want. That's the posture, according to Jejiu, that the traditional setting of governance had. So you see, Buddha, that is the language. Nana and council says, why Nana and council? Why is it that the president has signed a veto that this? Why didn't we have that then? You can't, you dare not. Because they said there isn't a failed chief. There is a failed advisor. The chief didn't make, why do we keep saying chief? That was the highest authority there, okay? Okay. 
he would depend on what council says. Who was the council? One of you talked about decentralization. The council of elders comprised of, and she says this. So if you have read it, I'm only recounting what is there to help you think and tease out the democratic element. They are the people, the reps from what? So let's start. If it's a family unit, they will have the family head. We're talking about nuclear. Then it transcends to what? The Ebushia extended family. That will be your uncle or your grandpa, whatever. Then the, that one will go to a higher level of the Ebushia where we have Akona or Yoko, uh, Anona. I'm using the Asante version or the Fante one. Bear with me. I don't know for the others, but I'm sure you know where the totems are. Okay. So you see that when you go for funerals, you hear this is Oyoko Ibushi are painting this. I mean, when they are reading the funeral or something, oh man, <laughs> sometimes I sleep off. And 30 minutes, they are still reading. I'm waiting for news. One funeral announcement. If you look at the trail, trailer, Ibushi are painting of them, the Oyoko clan of them, and his wife, I've been to Sophia, and in the day, and I'm about painting this. Even that about painting may not even know about the one who has died. But because he or she says, I am Oyoko, or I am Anana. They will mention and trace it all the way to that. That is how the people see themselves. It's the same with Evan. Just I don't know them. They are very entrenched in their traditions. They believe it. They are attached to it. So look at the, the, the nations that are like that. You can't rubbish their things easily. So what? I don't want you to go way off. But the point is, if the person see it that way, this is all that is important for now, then they will participate. Look at that. And then they will freely express themselves because they will think of the discussion as a consensual one. Not that it's a consensus. So we don't think differently. We don't have our minds. We don't know how to critically assess or evaluate matters. No, that is, that is an insult. If you say uh, the African traditional setting, was built on, or the discussions are always uh, aimed at consensus. Consensus is not the end, the goal. Consensus is the approach, the method used. You see, so it's a methodology aimed at arriving at an agreed position. Okay, so get the difference. Otherwise, you say, oh, this thing, if I go and say something different, they will say me, I'm not for consensus, so I don't say anything. And that's not what consensus. Consensus doesn't mean there's no disagreement. In fact, to claim that we have agreed at a consensual position rather suggests that we started at a point of disagreement. I had a different view about the product. Remember the marketplace scenario, which is symbolic of the word jabo, a budra. So when we go to parliament, it should be a jabo, a budra. Why? I'm going to say, I think that you level will help us. Then someone else will say, no, I, I think that it will be too much bad, you know, look at where we are, blah, blah. Then someone will say, oh, but we still need money, so what can we do, this, this? Not two entrenched extremes, no, which is only numerically determined. That's even the part that hurts the most. Before you start, you already have a conclusion, which you cannot beat traffic about. Even if you can see that, oh, there's some wisdom in what is person. You can't change it because you are labeled like football. You can't let your ball hit them. The, your own net. So you have to intentionally play it opposite. When you can see that this ball could have gone this way, it's the better way. That is the thing that is sick in the wholesale adoption of our current system of what is happening. And I'm saying the people that bequeathed that to you, if they even did at all, have stopped doing this. They talk super majority. When it comes to going to uh, Ukraine to support them or going to China to question how they are doing certain things. It's a unanimous decision. Sometimes only one person says no, or two or three. It's always, the, you see, there is a point when the discussion is national. And then there are times when it is okay about the part to it. We, the people who went to learn, we have copied and copied the mistakes that the people have used the razor to clean and change. We are still copying the wrong. And we are copying with all our vim and energy. And it's not working. We are scoring zeros and we are still copying. Okay, so if you got this, and I'm a bit passionate about it because it's real and it affects us directly, then you will see Jesse's point. So that was it. Then there's a limit on what? The power of the government. I told you that is why we see Nana and the council. Now the current council state, what do they do? 
<laughs> Look at the constitution of that entity, the very revered entity, rich people with rich experience. I mean, we respect them. But they, they, they are told that what you tell the executive or the whatever, the government, can be ignored. So it is a nice cosmetic asset stance. Eh? I'm sorry, but that is that it will be cosmetic. You can only advise. You can say whatever you want, but I will do what I want to do. Can that work? Is that what the, the chief of the traditional account system would tell the council of elders? Sometimes you, the chief, you say nothing when you meet the elders. They come and tell you, you have to ensure that this thing that has started in this, this thing will stop. Because, no, you cannot sit there and do this. They say order, but when they come out, so your strength is galvanized from the council. And the council gets its strength, decentralization, eh? gets its strength from the Ibushia, local or whatever, or where there is a more intricate system, the town lead, then the paramountcy. So it moves all the way. Look at currently, those of you who know, you see that sometimes your, your uncle or father or something say, I'm going for family meeting. My father, that's what you say. Then. And it's a little uh, TVC. I will say, Miku Bushin Shidi, the gathering of the family. The gap people amongst you, you know, those of us who stay in Accra, even the other sometimes they travel monthly or you say, Oh, this one is a family meeting, I have to attend. Then that one, even now that so much has been corrupted and undermined, so to speak, it is still working. The people feel that. How many times do you meet your MP who is supposedly represent you at parliament to tell? the higher authority, what they are So the decentralization may be extremely inadequate to trickle down to the people so that the people will feel that they should participate and be worried if the tap is leaking or someone is doing an illegality. You say, ah, what we do this is not good. Look at the resistance. The people don't care. Generally speaking, of course. Eh? The water can leak uh, and fill the whole area. Pipe born water, treated. Someone is jumping traffic light because he wants to get there first. Some are driving along the roads of the, the, the roadworthy person. Hey, he goes, is a roadworthy. The guy is coming from the roadworthy office with a certificate that says the car is roadworthy. And the cars, <laughs> the smoke from the back of the car, <laughs> as he's coming out of the roadworthy building, if you want ever. To, 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 to roll a black smoke. He just got the certificate. Government institution. Apologies if you work there, but I'm telling you the truth, and you know that. The tie in uh, where is that daddy? The ties are spot. He just went and paid something whom you know or something. Because the people don't feel that they are hurting themselves. They think this is a bind. There you go. You saw that word too. A bind the government, reminiscent of the state then during the colonial times which was called castle so that name is still trailing and you remember the power of how we reference things so this is government work this is government hospital this is them not us Uzu says until we have a, se a sense of what us who we'll struggle with the rule so the citizen is the people joining in the rule of the sovereign it means we are the people when we are docile. We become citizens when we are actively engaging in rule and we become whatever. So the point is, we are the government. We make the rules for who? For ourselves. To better whose life? Our life. That is democracy, according to Rousseau. And so until we get a general will that captures, that is a collectively held will. We are not practicing self-rule. You see that? How will we get a general will when the people don't even consider themselves as one to own the government? You see the problem. The how can we even discuss and consensually agree on that which is for us as a collective? The one as a nation. So you see the coup d'etat. As you are sitting on the government rule, and I'm watching you closely, I'm in a hurry to sit there because you are you and I'm me. But if I thought of you as part of me, I'm one body, you are my leg, and then I am the hand. I may be the eye, I use that symbolism, then I'll take your comment, I see three hands up. I may be the eye feeling very sleepy. 
But my head or my brain, which is still part of the body, says, look, we are going to write an exam. Better look sharp. Open your eyes open. Otherwise, we are all in deep as you see that. So the eye may be you, and then I may be the leg, and someone else may be the brain. Come together to form a body politic. It is in my interest that you, the eye, open. Why? Because I may be the brain. I have no issue for now. But if you close, you who are the eye, if you close, we will get zero in the eye. And if leg, who is uh, as another person, Anderson, for example, decides that today, dear, I'm tired and it's not moving, brain may be alert, eye may be alert, but if leg doesn't move, we are in trouble. So it is important that we bring everybody on board. If we created a body politic, it will help us look out for each other. And now, if it's the eye that is closing, we may look for some leptin to drink so that will come alive a little. If it is a foot rot that is preventing our, our foot from moving, we'll look for some code. Who will be doing the hand? We'll be busily applying chocho. Why? Because the whole body will suffer. If that tiny little toe decides that it's going to suffer from kaka, that is why we will be interested in what is happening with Abudus and Andanis. Because it's a collective whole. When we see ourselves that way, otherwise, we will just be there. Hey, these people, when will they change this, their behavior? And this is the empire. We are only worried when that brother starts talking against our own traditionally. That one day we'll start looking for him to punish. Okay, so that was wholeness and not oneness. You should read that, it will help you. And then, Limits on government, consensual democracy, free expression, that, that detachment from us versus government will go off. It will be yenang kung kung kung, our own. So we build it for us. Let me take her. Thank you, Nana Kufiamo. I will take her, Hagit, dear. Welcome, then, though. You know, then we, we may have to come back to understand Joseph. Okay, go ahead. Good afternoon, Doc. Oh, yes, hi, my lady. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Doc, please. Ahead, doc. I wanted. To, yeah, Doc, please. I wanted to ask concerning um, Jeche's will of the people. Does Jeche apply the utilitarian principle to when he's talking about the will of the people? I think that the Akan traditional system he's appealing to will not even be interested in. Utilitarianism per se. Why? Because of what the utilitarian view may suffer. You see that the utilitarian doesn't want necessarily to meet everybody's need. He says the greatest good for the greatest number. That's utility. So if a lot of people, if you, you named it as utilitarian, it will mean that if a majority of the people subscribe to it, they accept that. Then it will be okay. But that is not, that is not, if you look at what Jachi is saying or what he thinks the traditional view was, the traditional view is looking out for everybody, even to the smallest minority. That's why they talk and talk and talk. He referenced some people, some authors. They say, hey, if you observed a typical African setting, and some of the examples are Kenya, Nigeria, Tanzania, you know, it's spread out, Ghana. They will, one matter, they will talk and talk and talk until they agree. In fact, they say, one of them says, they will sit under the tree and drink palm wine <laughs> and talk and talk and talk until they, they have a consensus. Consensus means until they are able to incorporate everybody's viewpoint. Now, that is where he quickly, he just quickly says, if you are always inclined, take note, to ensure that every member in the minority view is necessarily incorporated, it could hamstring the, the, the process, it could slow the process. Some can intentionally use that to, what, to, to uh, limit the process, to restrain you. So they, they will intentionally disagree. Huh? Okay, so he, he makes a note of that that at certain times you may want to do what a super majority kind of uh, decision making that means that let's say we have met as a traditional you know group we want to decide whether we should do a market or a bridge 
because we have some resources. Some say it's market, some say bridge. Then we say, okay, how many of us think that we should do market? Not just the numerical strength. We say, oh, we should be in this. Oh, but then feel like, if I check with my people after I consulted, and more, I think that the general consensus is, even though we need the stadium or the bridge, it's the market that is prevailing. All our tomatoes are going back. So if we could do the tomatoes, uh, the market now to take care of our tomatoes and stuff, we could always do the bridge uh, next year when we are able to gather some communal resources again. So that is what the people say. Now, you see how he's speaking. He's not saying how many people want tomatoes uh, if there's a market. Then seven people raise their hands and then there are three people left. Say, so the eyes have it. We are going to do market. Look at how people will be angry. Because the three may want the bridge. We do want to hear why. Is there a way to mitigate this? Can you manage the, the displeasure? Okay, of having to reject the yes. Could you say, oh, and people, we really understand that you also need a bridge because you live at the other side of the river and you are almost ostracized, so to speak, cut off from us. So what we want to do to mitigate that whilst we address the immediate concern we have is we will give you a free transport by the boat. The boat will move you from your place to this place for the next one year until we are able to do your bridge for you. But can you agree with us? Let's do the market since quite a number of us will find it useful. Then you manage with, you see what we are doing? We are trying to reach a consensual decision without having to necessarily do what everybody wants. But we are not also making it look as if because they are only three, they don't matter. This is our posture currently, you check. I mean, look at it. Parliament we have now. It's a hanging hang parliament. That's how you politicians call it. Look at how I, my MP tweeted us. <laughs> she says, I won't come. <laughs> I won't come and because of the people's head. They can't sleep because they can't make a decision. One woman is out and there's trouble. They are counting numbers. It's problematic. So, sister, to answer you directly, and she's not saying go utilitarian because for utilitarianism, if there are 60% people bowing for or supporting a, a certain position in decision making of governance or resource distribution, which is still part of our discussion, see, you see that in Jechi's social economic uh, politics. He's talking about social and political and uh, social economic freedom plus political freedom. Okay. So if we're dis distributing resources and a certain group of people, because they are only 40%. Utilitarianism will say the greatest good for the greatest number. So 60% will have their way. It will serve the utility. That is not Jeshi. He's advocating for a consensual approach and he thinks that is what pertained in the traditional sense. So by the time they finish with the meeting, sometimes they'll say, we are going to ask Abrewa. That's the, we are going to consult. We'll be back. And then the next day they'll come again and people will say, so can't we then split the money? Let's do half market. And then even half of our bridge. Then we know that everybody has been met. Oh, when we do half of the market, this is what will happen. Oh, don't you think? So we, we're trying to give you the boat. Or if the boat is not okay, then your, if your children come to school late, we will agree that the teacher should, should, should not punish them because they wait for their turn of the boat before. Does that help a little? Because next year, they will try and look out for your, your interest. Hey, then you have to look out for that. Then our farm produce will bring only 2% to Ghana. If it's ten percent, we'll bring only two percent because we have to. It is negotiation, marketplace of ideas, compromise. Do you understand compromise? You give something to get something because the person you are giving to is still you. If he benefits, you have benefited. That's the starting point. You negotiate. Negotiation means you admit that the person has an entitlement, and you also have it. And if we pull it at each, it, we are all pulling, we are all, all pulling, the calabash will break and we all lose out. So someone has to shift closer. Another one shifts closer. So it's just like we do with the pricing. That cannot be a utilitarian posture. And one bit to me, those who come by, come and buy. Hey, my brother, if you don't have money, go, 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 go. Let those who come and buy. Is that what happens at the market? How much will you get by a close of day if you have that posture? At the marketplace, you say you are selling the full shoe. 30 CDs. The sister standing in front of you says, I'll give three CDs. Hey, sister, is that how you are? 
especially if the person is my Ashanti friends. <laughs> I had a friend there, eh, whatever I buy and bring, she would say, ah, where is this, Papa? <laughs> you have been cheated. I say, B. He say, ah, this one, these onions. I would have paid five cities for them. Me too, I thought I'm going to do good negotiation. Mm -hmm. And I bought it at 20 cities because the person started at 50 cities, maybe a bucket or something. I say, hey, he said 50 cities. So by the time I finished negotiating, I got it at 20 cities. Then she would say, oh. They have cheated you. This thing I would have paid five cities. And it's true. She will negotiate. Sometimes I feel, oh, you are cheating this seller. But the seller will still buy because maybe she too, she bought it from the, the uh, uh, farmer at two cities. And she's coming to sell it 30 Ghana. So me to my friend too, say me to I'll give you five cities. And sometimes she'll finish and say, give me the rotten ones, and I'll use it to do shit or add it. You should come home with a good package. It's marketplace of ideas. Everybody will give some and take some. Not utilitarian. Majority carries the vote. Not we are in the majority, you are in the minority. So shut up. Minority can have their say. Majority will have their way. That is the, the, the bone of detachment. How do I even say it? The, the, the source eh, of a detached posture into governance. Everyone is looking at you. Do make me see. And now look at where we are standing. Okay, so I don't know if that helps, Dorothy. I I think I want to because we are ending the lecture. Let me make sure I've touched on everything. Please play the city campus one as well, okay? Because they also in, incorporated some good points that you would want to know and add to what you already know. Uh, I see Joseph's hand. I also see Nana Kufiyamu's hand. They've spoken earlier, but I still want to hear them now. If they have, so Joseph, go ahead. Or is the old hand? Then I drop it. I also see Nana Kofi and Musa. If it's the old one. Yes. Hello, okay. Doc. Yes, sir. Yes, madam. And um, please, I wanted to um, follow up my initial response with a question, but I got disconnected. Um, so I want to ask the question. Oh, now. sorry about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, please, um, concerning the election of the chiefs. Yeah. Like when I was reading through um, the chief's proposition, yeah. I saw it to take um, the posture of a uh, social contract. Specifically, yes. um, locks social contracts due to the fact that he said the people tell the the chief elect how they want to be ruled, and yes. also due to the fact that the people can dispose the chief if he's not ruling in line with the um inju injunction. Yes. So I saw it to take the posture of a um, social contract, but in the initial, I mean, the concluding part of that particular point, um, Kwame Dechi was like, "This is not a social contract." By a political contract. It's a political. So he just wants to, yeah, he wants to correct an impression that is not, he wants to deal with the concern that uh, Taylor has with the social contract theories. Okay. Who say okay. that man, man is not born a social being. Remember Taylor. When you use That's the right. word social, uh -huh, then you would have to deal with that. But he just wants to say, say that it is a political one. That means as for the politics, you first are born into society, then we generate an organization. So politics is just how we organize. But social, you are that already. You are a product of social interaction. Your mommy and your daddy have to interact for you to even be born. Okay. So man is naturally a social being already. So it's not a contract of your sociality. That one, you are naturally that. This is all he's dealing with. So it's a language thing. But he wants okay. to focus more on, uh -huh, on the police, the political. You know, I can be in Ghana. I can, if I go to America, the political setting would dictate to me how I live. If I come to Ghana, the political one would determine that. But as for my sociality, I am naturally a social being already. So, Jachi is saying, Nipper feels true, but see, or be seen, Nipper chrome. If a human being descends from a path, it descends into a human habitation, already a social being. But the political mm -hmm. one is what is organized. So, he wants to just clarify that so he's not accountable to those. Who, who make that mistake. But apart okay. from that, yes, he's saying what you are saying. And to add to what you detect with Locke, which is a very good, see how you are sipping out the connections. It's very beautifully done. The That's addition is that there is, yes, there is a limit on the power that the, gov uh, the chief has. That's yeah. one. Two, he said the second one also. And then the third one is uh, with Locke. When you were saying it came to mind, what was it, Kraa? Uh, that he derives the authority from the people, yes. And then yes, there's representation, there's representation. Okay. 
Uh -huh. So Locke also says that you, the people we are choosing, like legislature or what have you, only represent us. So if they yes. don't do what we say, they should take them out. That is so with the traditional folks also. Thank you so much, Anderson. Just a Please, thank you very much. Welcome. Please. And Akofi, please, is there a new point you want to make or ask a question? Please go ahead. I think we have touched on everything. I'll just show those who never read anything <laughs> where we are. Read one kind you see what Joseph is just raising the marking scheme like something. He and Joseph are more. Hey, Augustine and others. So if you don't read it, come and write democracy must be freedom of speech. This and this. You'll get 12 over 30. It will show that you haven't read 12, so they won't help your course because then you would have lost uh, 18 or so already out of a you see. If you have read it, it will show because the question will ask for what was done traditionally, which showed that there was democracy and this and that, and which would be useful in the day, you know, in the current modern system. According to Jeti and his rendition of the traditional said, no, what do you think? So I need you to read, and then you can do a critique of that. Nana, Kofi, your hand is up. If not, then I can take a cast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, is so that, that, I just wanted to um, bring a suggestion that um, to tackle the problem of failing African democracy, can you talk about um concept of meta nationality. Yes, where he's saying, yeah. yes, excellent. Keep going. Keep going. So where he talks about um transcending specific ethnic groups, yet you're accommodating them or on a basis of equality. So he, he says that this is very suitable for um multicultural societies. It's very suitable to apply in multicultural societies, especially the gentleman the has read mouse, Basa. You are <laughs> you are a mouse, a mouse thinker, which is very good. But you present it in a way that also captures Jechi as well. So this is very important. Transcending the ethnic groups, in other words, then the subnational cultures without rubbishing them. Corner says. Uh, the best way to create a homogeneous society, uh, uh, what is it, to, to pursue nation building, is to undermine the uh, group identity, if you like, national identity, that's the ethnic group identity. He thinks that we should diffuse those so that we will owe allegiance to the main one. That's problematic. Hmm, that's you, you will get a resistance, you will be shocked. She was in Togoland. Let the people do their culture, insofar as it doesn't hurt anyone. Don't be jealous that the, the people love their ethnic groupings. You to attract their attention. Do national culture. Day of this. Eh? When you are sharing the resources, share it equitably. Let them know that, hey, we glad that they say we are not this. Look at what they brought us. When you are allocating resources, do it that way. Opportunities. Remember what Raul says. When you are allocating benefit and responsibility, share it equitably. Let the people see that we belong. They will love you. When I say they will love you, not persons, they will love the whole. But you don't have to diffuse the subgroupings in order to create a whole. Wholeness means, as I keep saying tapestry, the subgroupings colors are there. So think of it like a dress, beautifully done. You can wear it, but inside the dress, there's a patch of red here, a patch of green, a patch of yellow, a patch of black. You see, that is. Ethnic group A is here, ethnic group B is there in their difference. But all have been interwoven to create a nice clothing that you can wear. So when you are coming, I see red, gold, green, black, yellow in your dress. You are not just all red gone or all yellow gone. You know, you can't force that. This is the point. And so our friend says, can we think meta-nationality? That's Kwame Chichi in his tradition and modernity. And then that simply means thinking at a national level without overlooking the subgroupings. You see, you, you don't de-emphasize it intentionally, but you stress our, our common sense of Ghanaianness. And if we keep doing that in a gradual way, emotionally and psychologically, take note, the people will now see their Ghanaianness. Ah, I can say that without fear or favor for President Kufo's government then, 2000, I wasn't young. I mean, that was a time that you would fly your Ghana flag because Ghana is playing. 
I'm telling you, I don't know how old you were then. But <laughs> it's 22 years ago. You will fly it. People were Ghanaian conscious. Maybe if I lived at Kwame Nkrumah's time, maybe I would say something else. But the point is, there was a sense of Ghanaianness. Uh -huh. I mean, banks were after us to come and save. Because you won't get me to exploit. I will do plantain cheese at the back here and sell it, and I'm going. I won't cheat my friend. I mean, of course, generally speaking, there was a sense, there was a sense of euphoria for Ghanaianness. This is all I'm saying. This is our own. Why do they want to sell it? They shouldn't sell our this thing because we saw it as our thing. Now, look at what is happening to some of our national, not now as in the current government, the deterioration. It's going on for a while. I want us to think from uh, what Nana Kofiamu is saying, and it is Jechi, if we could transcend, that doesn't mean reject or intentionally diffuse people's ethnic belongings. I'm telling you, it will boomerang to go against whoever approaches it that way. The people can start saying the cocoa. The cocoa is from our land. We will not let you come for it. What will you do? Will you use military people to go and fight? Okay, they will stop farming the cocoa. The gold is inside our land. You will not develop our roots. You can't come for our land. This is our traditional land. We are not giving it away for you to build whatever, national whatever. You see that? Then there's problem. So you want to make sure that the people feel a sense of belonging, regardless of their ethnic group, even as you pursue a common sense of what nationhood. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Let me take Augustine. We are done, now, so your friends are just mopping around. Yes, sir. Yes, please. So, uh, Doc, please. Um, there was a prescription by um, Kwame Jechi that towns must have councils that must be able to do their own discussion. And then he also made a proposition that MPs must be at the town council to be able to represent the people. Well, please, can you elaborate yes. on them? Yes, it's just so that your decentralization that you mentioned earlier. Is what he's showing now. Yes, please. These are prescriptions for the future. So, in other words, for now, he was speaking in 1997. You see that we do town. That man was a big man. You can't see that recently, in, in recent times, we do town and country, whatever, uh, meet the press, and the minister will come and sit there and tell us the state of the nation of the something. I don't know how effective it's been for some time now. I'm not following. But these are prescriptions that. Someone like Jechi and others like him in academia were making far back 1997. I'm not sure if some of you were born then. <laughs> hey, this woman is that part of the topic. Yes. Yes, 1997. The man was saying that. So he's just he was just advocating for how you can allow for what an a proper representation. How can you say you are representing me when you don't know what I'm saying? He even talks about referendum. Referendum meaning that a quick, if we have to say a yes or no to some like the e levy thing, you know, yes or no, we can quickly do it. A referendum. We <laughs> meet at the post office, everyone. Just like we go and we we have to vote to put somebody in power. We do that. We we queue long queue. Sometimes we go and queue as some are done. They are stones and their bags and their chairs have queued to vote someone into power. Can't we do the same on very sensitive matters? Just so that we have a fair idea of the particular grassroots you and I have view on that matter. The chief advocate for even order. So the one you are referencing is an instance where the rep, the one representing me, can know what I want and how. One of the ways is town uh, uh, road shows, like they said, they hear from the people, they also tell you, oh, the reason why all this while our road at Swami. I'm, I'm referencing that because it was in the news, which hasn't been done. Is you know, we are asking for asphalt, and they said so and so, and this and this. And people say asphalt, they sell some here, please. If you can't get some to buy, come and buy from here. That long talk is too much. If you don't get us this thing, you are not representing, I will oust you and put someone else, you know. They, who even come? They, we don't have that kind of culture. Unless it's two months or so. Sometimes one year, depending on which. Then the people come bothering us. So me, I don't, when you come with those your things, I throw them away. Oh. Some people I even ask them out of my office. My friend, go and let me think philosophy. Don't come and blame my vision. Okay. 
but others when they come they come with sweet talk if it continues like that there's apathy she the people have a certain uh disorient what's the expression then there's no commitment to the dance warfare people look at how much i'm i'm explaining and engaging this content you think everyone will have this time to impart which knowledge for which ghana to survive where when i'm not spending i'm not even considered you see the people must feel that i am trying to help in my own small way the doctor at the hospital is also trying to do what he can to build a strong nation academia is ensuring that we churn out people who can fit into industry who can fit into what politics every day so that we have a strong ghana human resource wise and industry wise the farmer is breaking his back to make sure that we have food to eat as us you see so it is a whole chain work if we didn't have a shoe shine those who repair shoes, and we are in trouble because some of us have shoes. You know? Three years ago, three years ago, 12 years ago, all we do is change the leather and light. Then we are back on track. We call the brother, oh, bra, bra, bra. He will stitch us together. He is also doing that so that we will have an active working Ghana. Now, if I don't want, I'm not interested in that Ghana. Who cares whether I mended the shoe well or I put too much fertilizer into that? Cassava, you are busy eating like that. You'll be sick. You'll die in no time. The doctor too. Look here and there. Say, Charlie, Charlie. There are no beds. Look. Can you get a bed? No bed. Charlie, no bed. Right. There you go. If there is no bed and the person is committed and loves his nation and its people, I tell you what, to attend to you in the car. They will pull your car seat and create a bed there. I'm telling you. But when you we go on and on and on and before long, everyone's connection to the collective has is so down. And everybody's more concerned about how I'll go and pick my child from school. Now, these people, if I'm not careful, even salary you can't get, they will delay, they will give me, I, I, we agree on mode of payment, I'm not paid. That's the socioeconomic one that she touches on. See, he says you shouldn't detach from the political one. You have to read the text. It's very comprehensive and detailed and rich. The man is a luminary. So he's saying so many things and he's doing it philosophically. May his gentle soul rest in peace. This is a contribution that will live on and on and on. So I want you, not that it's a hundred percent, but he has so much he's saying that you and I, I don't know, maybe Augustine, maybe a United Nations a rep for something. Very big position, consultancy. If you are looking for him, you have to write three, three, a through three people, three secretaries before it will even get to his desk. Now he has to make decisions to help Africa. Then is, is it going to be the same old stories? No, that begging thing. No, we should be embarrassed by that. Okay. So when we are sharing resources, the economic and social administration, the cheese paper is saying a lot, a lot. And all he's appealing to is that we don't have to reinvent the way. Just go into our own experiences as Africans, and you will see that we had that if it had been allowed to evolve. Maybe the negativities, like the woman's place that wasn't given recognition, the hereditary. I told you that the current systems we have had all this, they transitioned because they would they were allowed to make the pertinent changes as they practice you are doing the thing so you realize that this thing is not working then you drop that then you allow for this then you drop that then you allow for that see that she made the, the chief justice then to do now uh, to do a wood i mean the chief justice people were shocked hey what is this chief justice woman yes she was and she discharged her duty you know in a commendable way and then after that we had the parliament a, a, a speaker of parliament being a woman. And these things are were not the norm. But if we were allowed to evolve it, and the people who took uh, what the, the, the reins of government would just think through them, people, eh? and always think about the people that they are ruling and what they want. You see, then we would be really practicing democracy which is what the rule of the people by the people and for the people not something that was hanging somewhere cut and paste and brought boom 
So that it shows you what Dennis Austin's argument was. You see that in his critique against him and stuff like that. I have ended. I don't see anything again, unless there's a question. If there isn't, tie this discussion into what I've had with the main campus, uh, city campus folks, and then see what the text says and reconcile or to be able to do that very compulsive question. I'm, I'm anticipating that people will do 26, 28 over 30, 26, 25, 24, because that is a heartbeat. If you do 12, it is taking you out of A or B plus. You are going to maybe D or C plus or F. Hey, your name. Mm. Any questions? We are done with the semester. So if you have any question, please ask. If not, that is quite mediative for you. It's a mentor. I like his philosophical ideas. Do his. I am one of his uh, chief critics. And he knew that before he passed on to go, we'll be discussing and I'll see. But, but Prof, I don't agree with this one. This moderate community, and so I think that you are not moderating well. <laughs> and he said, mm. so let me hear what you have to say to that. And it was fun to have him be a mentor. And we are glad to study those ideas and critique them. That's the pleasure of doing philosophy. You critique what you think can be critiqued. Remember, see me, you there, eh? Can critique what you think can be critiqued. He talks about now that we have a modern, more elaborate society, you can't come and apply heredity, that kinship is by inheritance. Whose chief should be the chief of our current Ghana? We can't do that. It, it will be problematic in a multilingual, a multi-ethnic society like ours. So he admits the difficult, but others we can pick on. The consensual, the free expression, the participatory democracy, a limit on executive power, you know. Where, where are the others? Let me see if I can add one or two more. I summarize all of them for you. Repeated in, in French. Oh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, okay, I've said all this. Let me. Yeah, so the elements are there. You see them. Mm. Decentralization. One of you said that yourself negotiation, consultation, equal treatment of all. That is the egalitarianism that he wants us to stress, not just political freedom, but social and economic equality. So people should feel free. The system should treat all equally. Government by consent of the people, even if we won't get to rule some, so not popular sovereignty. Our consent, our view must be sought in determining who rules, then access to the ruler. I think that's important. Can you get up and go to a uh, friend then? Uh, Flagstaff House. I say, oh, I want to see Nanado to discuss something <laughs> pertinent. But perhaps it has its own advantages because we have a very big, uh, you know, population now and if everyone got up grandma says I want to go and see Nanadu and ask him something and tell me where the flag happens and everybody can go there then the man would not be able to make any decision so possibly it is it is something that cannot be mitigated but is there a way to still ensure that there's free access to the rule in other words the ruler by the root as pertained in the uh, earlier setting. Then ownership of government, the people owned it. I've said all that. I just want to make sure. And consensus is vital. I've said that also. Um, what else is here? Um, yes, prudent and judicious use of power is stressed. Uh, he, he, he tells you, he wants you to know. Just a minute, I've seen your hand, Nana. Democracy should be built over time to allow it to evolve. So he, then he stresses on page 135, he shows you some of the things that cannot work. I have highlighted that uh, some things can't work in our world, world of today for certain reasons. Look out for them so you can have a very rich, safe rewriting, um, a buying wholesale adoption of the past is a no-no. All these are there, look out for them. The referendum bits and decentralization, inclusive, consultative kind of governance. 
is also at page 139 for emphasis. And then I think that uh, the one that talks about political rights and social equality, where he says integrate the two. Don't just look for individual freedom without an accompanying socioeconomic freedom, equal treatment of all. You see that discussion in, on page 141. He says you can pursue both. And then the conclusion is page 143. Finish. One compulsory essay, 30 marks. One optional essay, 20 marks, that you choose from three other essays. So you know four questions, you will answer two. One compulsory, the other one optional. I told your friends, so let me tell you also, if you want to go and punch, you think that, oh, after, apart from that one composure essay, we did maybe four other topics or five other topics. So Doc will definitely bring a question on each. So I'll punch one and study. You may be disappointed that those three others left may all be a blend of the two. Not difficult, but just trying to see if you have studied all the discussions we had. That is how you learn. So it may be, a, a wolf question, but it may be embracing some Martin Luther King Jr. or some roles in that same question. So if you picked it, then you'll be doing two in one. What does that mean to engage those fine discussions we had? We have recordings to most of them on the site to help your remembrance, and then the textbooks are available. Nana Kofi, let me take your last comment and then we can end. Yes, please, Doc. Um, so this is the general question. Yeah. Comparing Kwame Jochi's um, ideal form of democracy in the African setting with his um, thesis on moderate communitarianism, where um, I mean, Kiwa critics uh, criticizes his, um, moderate communitarianism in a sense that there's a limit to the individual rights. But as to, um, the justifiable judgments that they can from so does it mean that in the ideal form of democracy as proposed by Hamidu, can there be a limit to which the ethnic groups also share their opinions? Yes, they can. Okay. Just as at an individual level, we will mediate where the rights of the individual gives way to the entitlement or the interest of the collective. We will mediate it. You cannot make a claim to your individual rights without a commensurate recognition for communality or relationality. Otherwise, we'll have a big problem in society. I will wear my bikini to the lecture hall and feel okay insofar as I want fresh air. Then you have to sit there and watch your lecture. Say, yes, yeah, so Taylor said, in my bikini, brother, if we were to do, <laughs> if we were to do rights without looking out for what? Communality individual rights. At the same time, if we did only the community, I mean, what we did Taylor, that discussion is there. We pursued community, community, community without a commensurate recognition of individuality. Then we will stifle, we will, we will crush creativity, innovation. This is how we wear our clothes, so it can't be any other way. You, This is how we marry. So you and who marry? You have to allow people to think and create insofar as it doesn't hurt anyone so there has to be what a mediation that is what almost everyone talking the social political discourse agrees with the problem is how to do the mediation so Jesus says moderate it and he calls it a moderate communitarian view it means it is a communitarian view that is accommodating somewhat individuality that is what attracts criticism then others say it is what a liberal view a liberal view would seem to be individualism individualism that is making room for collectivity mal says go personism don't talk about two entities one trying to accommodate the other no there is one entity the person just that the person you or myself have two the person has what two aspects that way, it means that either way, it is the person that benefits. You are only looking out for his or her aspects. So that it becomes an internal issue and not an external issue and stuff like that. So yes, if you thought of it that way, then the ethnic group becomes like an individual. Then the collective Ghana becomes like what? The community. And then you mediate it the same way 
you actually advocate that you should do if you are dealing with a particular you individual versus the collective us uh PCL 304 class. Okay. So that's that will be my response. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you too. I think I enjoyed the session as well. The city campus session was also very interesting. So we have come to the end of our semester. I am glad that you have this one also on the record. And so there won't be too many excuses. Doc, please, that discussion, I didn't really get it. Oh, I, I missed this. Oh, I wanted to know if it's, no, no, it's there. So now the responsibility is on you because it will be a compulsory question. You won't have an option about it. It is good if you have a reference point to look to, to be able to do your essays and get your A in social and political philosophy. But more important, to make that impact. When they find that on your transcript and say, this brother has done some social and political philosophy. Can we put him as so and so, please? I will go and put you there. And you are not philosophizing. You have joined the free. You won't be happy. But if you go and you are thinking through and applying the ideas that you let, then we are proud to have you. Have a wonderful, wonderful semester, uh, end of semester. I pray that your exam will be accessible to you, not for only this course, but all the other courses. And you make it uh, you know, successfully into year 400. If you still stay with us as a department, we are happy to have you. But if you have to move on to, don't worry, our our traces will always be with you in, in your study over there. That is what is most important. But you have to make that decision yourself. Don't be pushed into making any decision when it comes to your academic work. You can only be guided, but do what you are able to do and you love to, and then you will excel. Wish you well. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. All the best. Thank you, Tito.